Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. We are starting with a new phylum in this kingdom that is animal kingdom and the phylum is Platyhelminthes. This word is derived from two words which means platy means flat and helmen means worms. So it includes the worms which have flat body. They are dorso ventrally flat. Dorso ventrally flat. So if we talk about a worm, it is going to be flat like this. So from dorsal side and from ventral side, it is going to be flat. So these worms, they are normally termed as flat worms and they are dorso ventrally flattened or they have dorso ventrally flattened body. The animals which belong into this phylum, they, this is or this group is the first group in animal kingdom where we start seeing bilateral symmetry that means the organism with which we started we started with the lowest most primitive that is uh, poriferans so from porifera the nidaria tenophora and all so they were all diploblastic this is the first time we are talking about bilateral symmetry and triploblastic organisms the lower organisms were showing either radial symmetry or they were uh, asymmetrical. They show bilateral symmetry. These are the characters which are seen for the first time now. So they show bilateral symmetry. They are triploblastic. That means the body parts or the complete body develops from three germ layers that is endo, meso and ectoderm. Bilateral symmetry for the first time, triploblastic nature for the first time. They show organ system. This is also for the first time seen because before that it was only tissue level of organization. And there is one more character which we see for the first time here that is syphilization. Syphilization means head formation. Though this head is not very specialized because the brain or those sophisticated structures are not formed, but at least head formation is seen for the first time. So these are the characters which appear for the first time in this particular phylum. Now there is one more feature which we see in them. They are acelomates. Acelomates means there is no cavity. So if we talk about a section of the worm, so this is the outermost body wall and this is the elementary canal, then this cavity if is present then it can be true or false coelom. But in case of flat worms, this, this cavity is filled with cells. So there is no cavity as such and that is why we are calling them acelomates and these cells which are present they are known as parenchyma cells. Normally parenchyma word we use when we talk about plant tissues but here also these cells are termed as parenchyma cells. Now let us take some general characteristic features of this particular phylum and then we will take up few important examples. These are some important things which are seen for the first time and they are acelomates. Now let us take system by system for excretion. Excretion or before talking about excretion we can also talk about one more thing which would help us understand this part that what is their habitat? That means where are these platyhelminths found? Most of them are endoparasites and few are free living. Endoparasites would include liver fluke, tapeworm and free living would include planaria. So let us write one example here. So here endoparasite is 
tape worm that is tinea solium and here we will take the example of planaria. This is a free living it is found in fresh water. Now their excretion depends on the habitat also. Now here when we come back to this point excretion they are a monotelic. That means the nitrogenous waste which is eliminated is ammonia and for this they have special cells. These cells are known as flame cells or they are also termed as solenocytes and they are considered as protonephridia. So, we can use any of these three terms they can be termed as flame cells, solenocytes or protonephridia. Now the reason why they are called flame cells is the way they look. These cells if we draw a cell the surface which is exposed and this is the wall part. This is the cytoplasmic area. Here is nucleus and all other organelles, cytoplasm, everything is going to be here. And from this part we would find there are many basal granules and from basal granules there are cilia which are arising. The movement of this or these cilia appears like flickering of flames and that is why they are commonly termed as flame cells. So it is a cell, the shape is different and there is a tuft of cilia. So they have these cilia which move for collecting the body fluid. So now what happens is from the tissue from here the substances will be thrown out, the substances are waste we are talking of, the waste would be collected from the cell and with the help of this movement it will be thrown into a tube like structure. This is going to be the tube like structure and then it will be eliminated from the body. Now coming to another system say if we talk about the digestive system. Endoparasites like tapeworm they do not have digestive system and they do not need it because they take the digested food from our body or the body of the animal in which they live. For example, if we talk of tapeworm then it is found in our intestine, it takes the food which we have already digested. So they simply take that digested food so they do not have to digest it. So digestive system is absent in endoparasites but is present in free living forms. So it is present in free living like planaria free living form and when it is present it is in the form of a blind sac plan, blind sac plan. That means it is an incomplete digestive system there is one only one opening. When we started with animal kingdom we talked about these body plans. The blind sac has only one opening and the other one which is tube within a tube has two openings that is anus as well as mouth. So here incomplete digestive system is present we call it blind sac body plan and this digestive system is absent in case of endoparasites. If we talk about nervous system though there is syphilization that is head formation but brain like structure has not developed yet. They have a network of nerve fibers and we say that the nervous system is ladder like. That means there would be nerves and they are interconnected with the help of transverse connections. So nervous system. Now let us come to reproductive system. Reproduction is important in this because they are hermaphrodite only one organism is unisexual most of them are hermaphrodites. Hermaphrodite means one organism is going to have both the sex organs but their body structure or anatomy is such that they still favor or they are still able to undergo cross fertilization and internal fertilization. 
development may be direct or indirect both are possible direct as well as indirect direct means there is no larval stage which is formed and indirect means there is a larval stage form for example in tapeworm i can give you an example here in planaria there is no larval stage so it is a direct development whereas in case of tapeworm there are larvae and these larvae are known as hexacanth larvae or cysty circus larva we'll write their names when we take these examples so this is the general thing about platyhelminth they are flat absolutely flat there is if we talk of tapeworm it is as thin as paper because dorso ventrally they get completely flattened but the important thing that we have to remember is this part that is this is the first phylum where we start seeing these kind of characteristics so first time bilateral symmetry is seen first time they are triploblastic so after this all the organisms still mammals would be triploblastic and before platyhelminth that is three phyla porifera coelentrata and uh, tenophora they are diploblastic so from here we'll have triploblastic they have organ system and as we move further these organ systems and the structures are going to get more and more evolved and for the first time we find syphilization and a word that is parenchyma it is given to the cells which are filled in here and that is why there is no cavity now in the next part we'll take up couple of examples of this phylum